Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah, an indie game creator, and I'll be joined by my brother Liam to delve into the world of 2D ranged combat. By the end of this video, you'll know how to make a 2D ranged weapon that rotates to look at the mouse cursor, as well as shoot projectiles that follow a flexible trajectory. This has been requested since I made my first ranged combat video almost two years ago now, so hopefully you'll find it useful. Before we get cracking though on this project, here's a reminder that my brother and I created three complete game creation Udemy courses. One on the fundamentals of both Unity and C Sharp, the other on creating a top-down shooter with a boss battle, multiple enemy types, weapons and more, and lastly a 2D strategy game with grid-based movement, a turn-by-turn -turn system and so on. If you want to learn a ton and you'll support Blackthorn Prod, this is the best way to do so. Each course is priced at $10 and the links are of course in the description. I'll now pass the mic to my brother Liam so you can get started. Hey guys, it's Liam. Let's jump right in and start creating this really cool floating arrow effect. The first thing that we'll do is to make our ball rotate to face our mouse cursor like this. So if we have a look at our hierarchy, you'll see that we actually have an empty game object called bow, and inside of it we have the actual bow graphics. We do this so that we can have full control over the pivot point of the bow. So just by moving the graphics in relation to the bow game object, the rotation will get applied from a different point. Alright, so I'll go ahead and select my bow in the hierarchy, and create and add to it a new c -sharp script that I'll call bow. Once it has been created, we can double click on it to open it up inside of our text editor. So we need to basically calculate the direction between the bow and the cursor so that the bow can be turned towards the cursor. To calculate a direction between two objects, we just need to subtract their positions. So let's imagine this simple 3x3 three three grid, with point A placed at the coordinates 1, 3, and point B placed at the coordinates 3, 2. If we subtract the position of point B, with A, we get the direction between them, which would be 2, negative 1. In other words, to go from point A to B, we just need to add the direction vector to negative 1. So in our case, point A would be our ball. So let's go inside of our update function and create a vector 2 called ball position. And it will simply be equal to transform.position, since this script is attached to our ball. Point B will be our mouse position. So let's create a vector 2 variable called mouse position and we'll set it equal to input.mouseposition. However, input.mouseposition returns the position of the mouse cursor in pixel coordinates, but we want its position in world space. To make this conversion, we'll simply wrap it inside of camera.main.screen to world points. Then let's create our vector2 direction variable and set it equal to mouse position minus ball position. Alright, now that we have calculated our direction, we can use it to turn our ball by simply saying transform.right equals direction. So basically, transform.right corresponds to the red axis on our move tool. And so here we are making sure that our red axis is always facing our mouse cursor. Alright, our ball is now perfectly tracking our mouse cursor. If for any reason the ball isn't facing correctly the mouse cursor like this, just make sure that by default your weapon is facing right. If it is facing up or down, for example, the mouse tracking will be shifted incorrectly. Alright, now our next step is to actually shoot out an arrow when we click on the left mouse button. So we created this cool looking arrow sprite and we turned it into a prefab. It has just got a simple box collider 2D component as well as a rigid body 2D component. So I'll go back to our bow script and I'll start off by creating a public game object variable called arrow, which will store, of course, our arrow prefab. Let's also make a public float variable called launch force, which will let us control how much force are we going to apply to our arrow. So is it going to be a rapid far shot or more of a slow shot? Finally, we'll make a public transform variable called shot point, which will let us control exactly the position at which we will instantiate our arrows from. Now inside of the update function, we'll check inside of an if statement when our left mouse button has been clicked on. So if input.get mouse button down, and we'll pass in 0 for the left button. In here, we'll just call a shoot function. Let's now go ahead and create that function. So I'll make a simple void shoot function. In here, we'll simply call the instantiate methods. 
we want to spawn in our arrow prefab at our shot point dot position and with shot point dot rotation. Let's store this newly created arrow inside of a game object that we'll call new arrow. We now need to fetch the rigid body 2D component of our newly created arrow so that we can modify its velocity. So I'll say new arrow dot get component rigid body 2D dot velocity and we'll set it equal to transform.write, which I remind you corresponds to the red arrow axis, multiplied with our launch force variable. Now, back to Unity, I'll create an empty game object that I'll call shot points. I'll parent it to my bow, and I'll just place it wherever I want my arrows to spawn from. Then, we'll drag and drop this shot point into the correct slot. I'll drag and drop my arrow prefab, and I'll set my launch force to, let's say, something like 13. Okay, so now you'll see that whenever we click on our left mouse button, a new arrow gets launched in the air and then falls back down to the ground due to gravity, thanks to our rigid body 2D components. We would now like the arrow to rotate so that it faces the direction in which it is moving. So let's select our arrow prefab and let's create and add to it a new c -sharp script called arrow. Once it has been created, we can double click on it to open it up inside of our text editor. So let me explain to you how we're going to achieve this. This triangle represents the velocity of our arrow. The bottom side represents the velocity on the X, and the right side represents the velocity on the Y axis, and the long side of the triangle represents the total velocity. Well, the angle that we want to calculate is this one right here, because we want our arrow to be aligned with the direction of the long side of the triangle. To calculate this angle, we're going to have to use the tangent of this angle, because in this problem, we know the adjacent side, which is our velocity on the x axis, as well as the opposite side, which is the velocity on the y axis. So inside of our script, we'll first of all create a rigid body to the component called rb. Then inside of the start function, we'll set rb to be equal to get component rigid body 2d. So we're basically storing inside of the rb variable the rigid body 2d component that is attached to our arrow. Now we'll go down to our update function and create a float variable called angle, and we'll set it equal to mathf.atan2, and we'll pass in our rb.velocity.y and rb.velocity.x. This function will calculate the angle that we were looking at just before, but it gives it to us in radians instead of degrees. To make the conversion, we'll just multiply it with mathdev.rad to deg. Once we've calculated our angle, we have to now actually modify the rotation of our arrow. So I'll set transform.rotation to be equal to quaternion.angleaxis. This function takes in an angle, so we'll of course use the angle variable that we just calculated above. And then for the second parameter, it takes in a axis. We're only interested in the rotation on the z axis, so we'll just put in vector3.forwards. And that's it. So if we now save our script, we can go back to Unity and test it out. And indeed, our arrows are now perfectly rotating to follow the trajectory of the shots. Alright, so let's now take care of when our arrows hit the platform, because at the moment, they're acting a little weird. Because we're going to need to detect collisions between our arrows and our platform, we are of course going to add a Polygon Collider 2D to our platform. Okay, back inside of the arrow script, we'll make a bool variable called has hit. Then we'll just wrap our two lines that are inside of our update function inside of a if statement checking if has hit equals equals false. So basically, we only want to apply the rotation to our arrows if they haven't hit anything yet. Then let's go down and create our void on collision enter 2D function. That I remind you gets called each time our arrow hits another object that has a collider attached to it. In here, we'll just set has hit to true. Then we'll set our rb.velocity to vector 2.0 so that our arrows stop moving completely. And finally, we'll just set rb.iskinematic to true so that our arrows get planted into our platform and don't get affected by gravity. Okay, okay, so back to Unity, before pressing play to test it out, we'll select our arrow prefab and go to its rigid body 2D component, and we'll make sure that we constrain the rotation on the Z axis. You'll see that now, when our arrows hit a platform, they just get stuck onto it, and that looks much better. Let's fix one little problem, and that is that at the moment, our arrows are colliding with each other, and that is probably not something that you want. To fix this, we'll just go ahead and create a new layer called arrow. 
Once you have created that new layer, we can just select our arrow prefab and add that layer to it. Now, just go to Edit, Project Settings, Physics 2D, and go down to the Layer Collision Matrix, and just uncheck the box between arrow and arrow. And that's it, collisions between arrows do not get detected anymore. Beautiful. Our last step is to make this curve out of these white points, so they will act as our shot projection path. So let's go back to our bow script and create a few variables. First of all, we'll make a public game object variable called points. They'll just store our point prefab. Then we'll make a game object array called points. that will store all of the points that will make up the curve. Then let's make a public integer variable called number of points. This variable will be used to control the amount of points that you want on your path projection. And finally, let's make a public float variable called space between points. As the name suggests, this variable will let us tweak how much space we would like in between each point. Then inside of the start function, we'll set points to be equal to a new game object array with a size of number of points. Let's now make a simple for loop that will run as many times as there are points in our path. Then in here, we'll just set points of index i to be equal to a newly created point that we're going to instantiate as our shot point dot position and with no rotation, so quaternion dot identity. Now let's create a function that returns a vector to called point position, and it'll take in a parameter called t for time. Now let's create a vector to variable called position. To determine the projected position of a point at a certain amount of time, we'll use this formula from Newton. So the position is equal to the starting position, so in our case that is the vector 2 of the shot point dot position, plus the starting velocity times time. So I remind you that a velocity is simply a speed in a certain direction. We've got the starting direction because we have already calculated it right here. So let's just declare this variable at the top of our script so we can access it inside of our function. And so for the velocity, we'll say direction.normalized times our launch force. We're taking the normalized direction so that it only takes in count the direction of the vector and not the size of it. Basically, a normalized vector is just the exact same vector but that is restricted inside of a one unit circle. And then we just need to multiply that velocity with time and so we'll just add times t. Let's wrap these three terms inside of parentheses. Then we need to add 0.5 times our acceleration force, which in our case is simply gravity. So I'll say plus 0.5 times physics 2d.gravity. And finally, we just need to multiply with t squared. And that's the calculation done. So let's now just return our position vector. So now inside of the update function, we'll just use the same loop that we used inside of the start function, and we'll set points of index i dot transform dot position to be equal to our point position function. And for the time parameter, we'll just pass in our index i multiplied with our space between points variable. This way, the higher the index i is, the more that point represents the position of the ball at a further point in time. Alright, with all that said and done, we have now finished this little project. So save your script and let's go back to Unity one final time. In here, drag and drop your point prefab inside of the slots. I'll set number of points to 50 for example, and I'll choose 0.025 for the space between my points. Pressing play, you'll see that indeed we have a beautiful curve that is showing up, and our arrows are following it very precisely. Of course, you'll see that whenever we change the value of launch force, the trajectory updates automatically to reflect that change. Alright, thanks so much for following this tutorial. If you have any questions whatsoever, write them down in the comment section down below, and my brother and I will make sure to get back to you as quickly as possible. Okay, it's Noah again, here to wrap up the video. We both hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. For those of you wondering, Dashing Fire is still in the making, and I'll probably make a devlog sometime soon. In the meantime, hit subscribe to get notified when more game dev content gets released. Of course, thank you to our patrons for supporting this channel every month. Every small donation is really appreciated. And okay, I'll see you all soon. Cheers.